Hello friends, this is Kik and in today's episode you can expect Synchron has implanted neuro implants in the first six volunteers in the USA. An AI written story that won a literary contest. Hyperloop, the largest developer of vacuum trains, is closing down and laying off employees. Kawasaki introduces the hydrogen powered Ninja H2 SX motorcycle. And a startup that showed a prototype capsule for near space flights on a balloon. All this and much more right now. Let's go. We start today's episode with Synchron, which has implanted neuro implants in the first six volunteers in the USA. Until now, the instances of implanting a neuro interface connecting the brain with a computer were extremely rare. Only about 50 worldwide. Only a small portion of participants in such experiments could leave the lab and use the implants in real life. The company first tested its implant on four patients in Australia and then, after moving to the USA, implanted it in six more volunteers. Next summer, Synchron plans to submit all collected data to the FDA. If the regulator approves, the company will get permission to conduct larger trials to determine whether the implants will be allowed for medical use. The advantage of Synchron's devices is that they do not require open brain surgery. The implant enters the brain through the jugular vein in the neck and then through blood vessels near the motor section of the brain. Once in place, it detaches from the stent and begins receiving electrical signals from the nearby brain tissues. These are transmitted to a receiver attached to the patient's chest, which then sends them to an external digital device. To interact with a computer, the user thinks about a specific movement like moving their hands. These thoughts create a distinct, easily distinguishable signal in the motor part of the brain. Then the data is converted into simple computer commands. To press a button, scroll down a page. Synchron's implant only has 16 electrodes, which is less compared to others. For speech recognition, at least 100 electrodes are needed. Neuralink and Precision Neuroscience implants have Turing 24 electrodes. But from a regulatory approval perspective, more electrodes are a disadvantage, as it takes much longer to get approval. Motor signals are the same for everyone and easily predictable, making them simpler to decipher. Meanwhile, a coalition of scientists is urging accelerated research into consciousness in AI. According to the Association for Mathematical Research of Consciousness, AMCS, there's currently no answer to whether AI systems can attain consciousness. Science cannot definitively say if AI will develop consciousness. Even detecting consciousness in machines is challenging, as no tested methods exist yet. Companies like OpenAI aim to develop a universal AI with superhuman abilities expected to emerge in 5 to 20 years. However, no research grants have been allocated for study studying the implications of machine consciousness. AMCS researchers argue that assessing the societal impact of universal AI, including potential threats, is crucial. If such a system doesn't share human values and interests, it could pose a significant danger. Understanding the needs of a conscious AI, like whether it can experience pain or suffering, is essential. Humanity has limited experience interacting with conscious species unlike us, and it's vital to accurately assess consciousness in AI. This assessment raises legal questions. Should AI be held responsible for crimes? Does it have the same rights as humans. AMCS, comprising experts in mathematics, computer science, and philosophy, plans to propose concrete suggestions and is preparing a report on AI technology regulation expected in mid-2024. Now, as we're discussing AI, let's continue with that topic. A professor at Peking University used artificial intelligence to write a science fiction story. The resulting novella, The Country of Memories, won a prize in a youth science fiction contest. Initially, the professor asked the AI to create a unique plotline never seen before in literature, captivating from the first three lines. Nonetheless, it took 66 prompts to achieve a satisfactory result. The novella describes a forbidden realm in the metaverse, off-limits to humans and inhabited by illusions created by humanoids and an amnesiac AI. AI. The story focuses on Li Xiao, a neuroengineer in the real world who accidentally loses all memories of her family and tries to recover them through this country of memories. The professor completed the story in three hours, spending most of the time on editing, reducing the original 43,000 words to just 6,000. While the contest jury praised the story for being sensitive, logical, and coherent, some lamented the lack of emotion. Another attempt to create a new transport system has failed. The dream of vacuum trains traveling at 1200 km h through airless tubes clashed with reality. Hyperloop 1, later Virgin Hyperloop, is selling its assets, laying off staff, and preparing to shut down by the end of 2023. Founded in 2014 as Hyperloop Technologies to build Elon Musk's proposed vacuum train transport system, it raised about $450 million. However, achievements were limited. A test track in Nevada and a passenger capsule test reaching 180 km h. In 2022, the company shifted focus to freight transport. The intellectual property of Virgin Hyperloop is likely to go to its largest investor, DP World from Dubai, and the Nevada vacuum track prototype may be auctioned. The failure of the largest developer might signal the end of this technology's development. 
Waymo, part of Alphabet, has long claimed that autonomous vehicles are safer than human-driven ones. They now present evidence to support this claim. Their vehicles traveled 11.47 million kilometers in Phoenix, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, providing a substantial basis for comparing their accident rates with human drivers. Waymo only considered fully autonomous mileage, vehicles without a safety supervising human driver. The company's autonomous vehicles were involved in traumatic accidents 6.7 times less frequently than human-driven cars, demonstrating an 85% safety safety improvement. Additionally, these vehicles were 2.3 times less likely to be involved in police reportable accidents, marking a 57% safety improvement. In absolute terms, this means Waymo's vehicles potentially avoided 17 injury accidents and 20 police reportable accidents over the specified distance. Waymo maintains that autonomous cars can significantly reduce road fatalities, noting that 40,000 people die annually in the U.S. due to traffic accidents. Last year, Waymo researchers published two scientific papers comparing the effectiveness of autonomous vehicles to human drivers. The first analyzed reaction times in unavoidable accidents, while the second proposed a new methodology for assessing how well autopilot systems prevent accidents. They examined dozens of real accidents that occurred in Arizona over the last decade. According to Waymo, replacing any vehicle in these accidents with an autonomous one could virtually eliminate all fatal outcomes. Kawasaki has introduced the hydrogen-powered Ninja H2 SX motorcycle. The design of the hydrogen-powered SX has undergone noticeable changes. Overall, the motorcycle has become larger and more angular, appearing more voluminous. Particularly striking are the two hard panniers, now housing tanks for compressed gas, five on each side. Generating useful energy from hydrogen requires twice as much air as burning gasoline, approximately a 34.1 ratio. Japanese engineers have a unique solution in the motorcycle industry, a supercharger and a centrifugal pump that rapidly pumps air into the combustion engine. Testing of the Ninja H2SX will begin next year. And what's a kick without space? A startup supported by Mercedes Maybach has shown a prototype capsule for near space flights on a balloon. Space Perspective decided to use a tried and true method, a balloon to lift those wishing to reach space heights. The balloon's ascent is limited to 30 kilometers, while space officially begins higher up at 100 kilometers. Still, ascending to a height twice that of commercial airliners can leave unforgettable impressions. Space Perspective isn't alone in this endeavor. French company Zafalto and Japanese Iwaya Geekin also plan space flights via balloon, like the Americans the French focus on a premium level with a comfortable capsule and exquisite dining. The Japanese are more pragmatic, with the Iwaya Geekin capsule offering only two seats and little comfort. Space Perspective recently introduced a prototype test capsule, soon to begin a series of unmanned ascent tests. The first manned ascent is expected by the end of 2024. By then, the Voyager vessel, acting as a floating spaceport for capsule launches and water recoveries, will be ready. The balloon will be enormous, about the size of a stadium, and filled with hydrogen. For descent, the hydrogen will be released. That's all for today, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye!